Hello and welcome to another edition of Anti-Siphon's Address Space Layout Randomization. Um, as always, this particular edition is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. Hey, we do like SOC services, pen testing, IR. Make our team be your security team and your security team can be part of our team. It's also brought to you by Anti-Siphon InfoSec Training, the home of pay what you can. It comes with one full year cyber range access, on-demand access, and also we have outstanding Standing packages available for um, for organizations that want to train their entire team, like stupid deals, like access to our entire catalog for $98 a month per student. Absolutely cool. Check it out. Well, today I am joined by our illustrious cast, um, two people that you know very well, someone that you hopefully well know very well. We have Ryan the Shootist making us look and sound good. We have Serena, uh, who's, I'm guessing is now completely recovered. Is that the case, Serena? I'm COVID free. COVID free. <laughs> now you got the metal mouth is done too. The metallic. Yeah. The Paxlovid. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. Yeah. And you might see someone that you normally don't see on the show. We have Eric. And Eric is going to talk about active directory replication, um, specifically as it relates to offensive stuff, because <laughs> that's just fun. It, that's right. right. And we're going to jump straight into the tech. Please type in your questions. And after he's done with his brief presentation on this, we will circle back and Serena and I will pepper him with all kinds of questions as he enters the AASLR murder board. So Eric, please take it away, sir. Uh, I didn't realize that there was going to be a shooting gallery after this. Oh, no, no it's not as much fun as <laughs> give you a heads up and a warning first. Okay, so, all right, well, perfect. Now jump in. So before I get started with with the specifics of what I'm going over. Um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with Active Directory. It is what Windows is using in most environments for your IDs, authentication, authorization, et cetera. Uh, and AD by default is read only, or well, I should say is readable by everyone, um, except for a few attributes, things like password hashes and some other things. So there's wonderful confidential attributes. Um, and that was because Microsoft decided that perhaps you shouldn't see everything, uh, perhaps like a lapsed password or a BitLocker recovery um, password, et cetera. Um, and over the years, people have developed ways of exploiting the replication so that you can get password hashes and everything. And that's actually using one of the three rights that I'm going to talk about, which is the replicating directory changes all right. But there's actually two others in there as well, just replicating directory changes and then replicating directory changes in a filter set. So what's the difference between these, right? As a pen tester or as, as someone who's actually trying to attack an environment, you want to get that replicate directory changes all so you can pull the password hashes, take them offline, start cracking and have a good time. But maybe you can't get to that layer automatically. Maybe there's a few controls in the way. Uh, maybe they've actually put in some good um, account tiering or, or uh, credential compartmentalization, new term that I like because it sounds much cooler than uh, uh, account tiering. Um, so you look at some other options. I, I've done pen tests now for the last five years. Uh, I've been running around and I've run into these scenarios where organizations decide that maybe they want to allow their people to do other types of, of replication or, or get information like through replicate directory changes for some unknown reason. Uh, really, any environment, anybody that's using Azure Active Directory and has an on-prem environment, you have at least one account in your environment that gets to do this. Uh, and really they need to be protected well. But once again, let's talk about uh, when you have perhaps something a little less. So what I did is I built a script here and I have, what it does is it will allow you to use the DirSync functionality instead of looking in Active Directory. So Active Directory is readable by everyone. Uh, so I'm logged in as a, a normal user in this poor little uh, lab environment that I have here. Um, and so once again, it's readable by everybody. So I can see pieces of information, right? I can see things like names. I can see uh, where they might be able to log into their groups and other pieces of information. And if, in most environments, you can look and you can see all of the attributes that are assigned to a object. Uh, large list of them here, but one that I know by default that is confidential is this 
uh, well, Unicode password, of course, is confidential. That's one that you can't get to. But U Unix user password is a confidential attribute. This means that while there could be a value here, I can't actually see it unless I have the ability to see more, <laughs> more information. Yeah, it should look uh, familiar to some people who've seen this before. Uh, it, it's actually a, a lab environment that I have for one of my classes uh, that, I, that I actually teach with anti-siphon. So when we're looking at it, I can't see anything here with Unix user password. Uh, if I was logged in as a domain admin, I could see something, but as a normal user, I can't. Um, and if we just say, you know, user one, even if I had this information in here and I wanted to look for, uh, I'm not even going to type it out here. It didn't make, it doesn't make a difference where I go. I would not be able to see this information. So let's say we have the ability to get an ID that has replicate directory changes. You can tell what these accounts are because the permissions are going to be set at the root of the domain. And just, I should explain what I'm doing. If we look at the properties and we go to security at the root, we'll go to advanced to show it nicely. We can see everybody who has replicate directory changes. And there are different options here, right? There's replicate directory changes, which is the first level. And this means that you have the ability to actually perform a dersync, get information outside of normal LDAP queries, which is what we're going to do. Then there's the one that everybody knows about. Once again, replicate directory changes all. And then there is this interesting one that is replicate directory changes and filtered set. What are the differences? Really, it comes down to the attributes that you're trying to look for. Replicate directory changes, once again, allows any identity that has those permissions to be able to get information out of normal LDAP queries or using the Active Directory commandlets that are part of um, the, the RSET tools. It is using dersync. So if we were logged in with that account, we could try and pull information. If you don't have replicate directory changes, like this poor account here, normal user, user one, uh, and we say, hey, let's try and actually pull a piece of information out of here, if I can paste, because I don't feel like trying to type the whole thing. There we go. We get this user has insufficient rights. All right, so I don't even have the ability to. But let's say we track down one of these wonderful accounts that have it, uh, such as this account that I know called uh, ad, er, Repter. Can you tell I'm a little nervous because I haven't done this in front of people in a while? So I want to run as a different user. And this is the safest way to do everything. I'm sure John is going to ask me about this, you know, doing a run as the safest way absolutely to do all of your administrative functions. It, it's perfectly safe. Uh, so I have to laugh there. It is my favorite way of finding people, though. So let's say we, once again, we want to find that someone here who maybe has something in a, in a confidential attribute. I've done some research in this, in, in this um, lab. I know that for some reason, the administrators are storing passwords in the Unix user password attribute. That's not something I can see as a normal user. And even as this person who has the ability to do uh, directory changes, replicate directory changes, he can't see that. And uh, da, da, da. we're going to go backwards instead. So what I'm doing here actually is I'm going to say that I want to invoke replicate directory changes. I want to get information out of Active Directory using Dersync. I want to look at any user account and I'm looking for the Unix user password because I've learned that they're storing this. So as we see, it ran in the background and I can show this script. And what it did is it used that dersync capability. It said, hey, I found this account out here, this user Unix user account, and this is the password that's been stored there. 
if we just do this through LDAP, and I remember his name, um, sorry, let me show all the properties here. It doesn't even come up um, as an option, right? If we look through the list, it doesn't even show up because it's confidential. Even if we go into Active Directory, as we kind of look through this list, we don't see Unix user password here. And even if we'd go in and we'd look at the account under Users, and we look at all the attributes, we see that if I scroll down to Unix user, it's not there. So looking through LDAP, looking through normal AD tools, I cannot see this. Even if we logged in as someone who had the ability to do replicate directory changes, we would not see this. But we can pull this information through DeerSync. How do you know what these attributes are? Uh, you can run another one. There's this wonderful attribute in the schema uh, that's called search flags. And that lists everything that you might have about different pieces of information with your different objects. So search flags, it will list things such as this is a replicated attribute. This is a attribute that has a index, so it is easy to search. The one that we want is 128. This entire thing is basically saying, look for all of the different objects in the schema, report back any attributes that have this value of 128, which equates to, I am a confidential attribute. In a default environment, plus one that you've installed laps in, these are the ones that come up, right? These are your, your normal set that are out there in every environment. Most of these, we still would not be able to get because Microsoft later added even more permissions to say, we want to require extended information. We need you to have another permission to see this, even if you have replicate directory changes. <laughs> Select, give me all your secrets, exactly. Um, so we know that Unix user password is available to anybody who has replicate directory changes. Other ones, such as this one down here, which is your lapse password, if you're not familiar with that, um, would not be available to us with just replicate directory changes. For some reason, cut and paste is not working today for me. So I'm logged in with Repter. He just has invoke replicate directory changes, replicate directory changes, that's it, nothing else. He gets the same wonderful error of you don't have permissions. This is where the next layer comes in. As I said, there are three layers. There's replicate directory changes, which allows you to do DirSync. Then there is replicate directory changes and filtered set. That is actually attributes that are copied to read-only domain controllers, a special subset. Uh, they were created out there so that you could have domain controllers that only have some passwords in them not all of the passwords in your environment. The idea that you could have a domain controller in a slightly less secure environment, and if you lost that domain controller, you'd only lose some of the passwords, not all of them. So if you have the replicate directory changes in filtered set permission, which would be, um, once again, read-only DCs or perhaps some other identities in your environment, they would be able to get some of these. So I'm going to log in as a different user yet again. Mm. That's why I set all of my passwords for all of my labs to password one, two, three, four. Password, see, <laughs> oh, that's even better than me. You know what mine is typically? I use the default Microsoft, which is password with a zero. So uh, there you go. <laughs> that's a good one to use, right? Yep. So it's something you can remember. And then all of a sudden you're like, am I pushing this live on the internet? Oh, that's bad. Yeah, exactly. Let me show everybody. Uh, but luckily this is just a lab. But this account 
has the replicate directory changes in filtered set permission. So if I do the same thing where I say, I want to look for that lapsed password, where I got a access to denied, I don't have that permission. If, oops, if I import the module first, I really should set all of these up beforehand, right? In this case, I said, show me all the computers, not just one. But if we look down here, because I had that extra permission, that in filtered set, it allowed me to pull extra attributes, including the wonderful lapse password here. You can tell that was set by lapse, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're allowed to pull even more, even though you wouldn't be able to just with replicate directory changes. How do you right. identify these? Right. Oh, well, well, now, did you up your permissions? Are you stepping up in your permissions to actually get to that password, that lapse password then? I, okay. So, You're just showing yes. these are the levels. This is what you can get, kind of. Exactly, with the different okay. levels. Because it took me a second. It kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, you know, talking to people. And then I saw that. And I'm like, wait, did he just identify a new weakness? And I, no. Yep. No, I did not. So yep. what I did is, so we have our regular user account who has none of those, which was user one, couldn't do anything. Yeah. Then we had somebody who had replicate directory changes. He could pull some attributes, but not things like laps or BitLocker because they require you to have more permissions, more rights, um, the extended mm -hmm. rights. Uh, but when I logged in as somebody who had in a filtered set, which is this other account, I now can pull things such as laps passwords, or once again, a bit locker, we could see that as well. Yeah. Um, and that's, and this is like really important, right? Because when you're, when you're testing, people are always going for DA, but there's absolutely. so many subtle variations and pushing out group policy changes for different applications may grant these rights that open up these vulnerabilities. It, exactly. And I, what I've seen, you know, quite often as, as people are getting more and more security conscientious, right? They have locked down their domain admins to a good mm -hmm. degree. They have locked down the, the MSOL account so that you can't get to it or other things that might be doing that, that full directory replication, right? That unlimited one, which is all replicate directory changes all hard to get there, but mm -hmm. they might've opened up these lower level ones to people for some reason. As I said, the, the worst yeah. environment I went to for some unknown reason, they gave it to all domain users. That was great. I was like, woohoo, yep. let's see what we can find. Um, and then once again, admit, I, I, I hate to say it, you go to some environments and people are storing passwords in clear text. Yeah. That's a bad well, place to put it. Really bad idea. Yeah. Right. But with this, somebody was just, just hit me up on Discord and wanted me to ask, is this something that like Bloodhound or Pink Castle, will they identify these particular weaknesses if available to them? Or is this just getting too far in the weeds, even for those tools? So... I believe that it will, st I'm going back and forth. Um, I thought Bloodhound used to pick out replicate directory changes, but I will typically go and verify it all the same. I love Bloodhound, at Bloodhound as a tool. I have seen that it, it's been pulling slightly less information at different times for me, which I think yeah. is probably me, uh, but I never know. Um, so I will actually go out and I'll go look at the root of the domain and see what's there. Because once again, okay. As soon as you have any user credentials, you can see this information, right? At least the permissions that have been yeah. assigned there. You don't need to have any elevated rights to see that at all. Okay, cool. All right, I'll let you get back to it then. Oh, Thanks. No, no, not a problem. Please give me questions. It, it helps me actually calm down. Um, uh, so <laughs> uh -oh. everyone who's listening, you heard him. Questions, please. Questions, questions. Yes. Copy paste failing yet again for me. So the filtered set can be used, man, oh man, oh man. If you want to know what attributes are in the filtered set, let me try one last copy here. Thank you. It's the same general query I did before, which I can post so everybody can just uh, grab it themselves if they want. Wait, wait, you didn't have this query completely memorized? Oh, no, 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 no. Because I love top, I love typing 1.2.840.11356.1.4.803. I, I personally put it to a song. 1.2.840.11356.1.4.83. I screwed up right there. Oh, that's there it. Go. <laughs> See, he's got to put it to a tune, man. 
<laughs> I'll have to try and remember that. Um, so it is a smaller subset of those originals. So instead of looking for that 128 sitting on search flags, I look for 640. So these are anything, all of the attributes that you could pull if you have the replicate directory changes and filtered set. And once again, it doesn't make a difference what other permissions have been applied to them, right? By default, all of these require for you to see them in AD using LDAP, even if you had replicate directory changes, that initial write, you would still need to have another ACL on there that says extended writes to actually see them. Replicate directory changes and filtered set bypasses that. It allows you to see them regardless of what the permissions are on those items, those objects and attributes themselves. And then once again, then there's the replicate directory, directory changes all, which is what everybody wants to get because that lets you get password hashes. Uh, my script here, uh, which I can send a link out to, won't let you actually get that. That's not exposed through the LDAP call of uh, Dersync. You can only get that through RPC. Uh, so you're, you're stuck using um, Mimi Cats or other similar tools out there that exist. So really it comes down to, um, you know, DC Sync is a very powerful tool out there. Um, and I have seen it applied to various degrees in environments, right? Once again, getting to that top level, that replicate directory changes all, might not be available to you right off the bat. But administrators like to use AD to store information. Hopefully they're not storing it in clear text, although you will sometimes see that in like admin description or description, please not there, or other attributes that they feel are okay, think uh, because they're not displayed by default in Active Directory users and computers. But AD, once again, is readable by everybody. As soon as you have any account, you're able to start seeing information. So some administrators look for these confidential attributes and they say, let's store some information in there, like the Unix user password. I've seen passwords stored in there in several environments that I've gone to, because once again, it's not displayed when you look at that in AD users and computers, or you do an LDAP query, or you use any of the tools that do normal LDAP searches. But if you can get an account that just has replicate directory changes or rep replicating directory changes, you can start seeing that information. And then you start building your pathways from there. And then maybe you can get another step up and another step up till you eventually get to where you want to be, which is a domain admin. But that's not always where you have to go. So my horrible demos there, but I attempted. Once again, see what you can find. Look at the root of the domain as soon as you get an account, right? Look at the root of the domain. See what the security is set there. See if they have anybody who has replicate directory changes, even the lowest level. Then see what those confidential attributes are in their environment. If you see something that is interesting looking, uh, because you'll be able to see all of the attributes, they're, they're not hidden. Even if it's not Unix user password, but you see something that looks interesting, like you know our admin passwords, who knows what it could be called. Um, see if you can pull that with replicate directory changes and you might get some interesting information. It's also a very quick way, I should say this, replicate directory changes is a very quick way to pull all of the account information out of there, right? Even if it's things that you can see with AD, it's a very quick way of pulling all of that information instead of doing normal LDAP calls. Yes. Yeah. Any account, yeah, I can't emphasize that enough either, right? As soon as you get any user account, you can start seeing information. And so, go ahead. Right, so we, so we got some questions that are coming in. The any the count thing, extreme paperclip, DC sync equals ouch. Mm. Um, now, uh, shikt a shikt, um, which I'm mispronouncing, I am sure said, you mentioned these excessive rights could be granted unintentionally. What attribute would you alert on to detect this? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, or would you be too in the weeds to alert on it? So, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so go ahead. I'm going to say there are some key places that you want to be looking at what the actual ACLs are, the actual security settings or the entries are. One would be at the root of the domain. Another one would, would be um, 
I can't believe I just forgot the name of it. It's one I talk about all the time. Uh, it's the, the template that is used to all critical objects, um, which I can show it to you. It's even better than me trying to just say the name by default. Under system, it's the admin SD holder object right here. This object is the template that gets applied to everything that's listed as a critical object in AD. Whatever the permissions are on this, get replicated every hour or so to every critical object in AD. Mm -hmm. So I recommend that you actually take a snapshot of the permissions at the root of your domain and this object and you compare it periodically, right? Don't worry. Yes, you should be looking for someone making security changes, making changes to ACEs. Yeah, but that's hard to audit. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say that's hard to audit. It's one of those things in security that we make a recommendation and we're like, oh, you should be watching this, but the reality of it is incredibly difficult, especially for systems administrators that are doing this. Um, oh, yeah. and usually when I see like DC sync issues, it usually comes from systems administrators that are troubleshooting something. And they're making change after change after change. And they're not going back and like, did that fix it? No. Did yeah. that fix it? No. And they're not rolling the changes back. And, and you get into an environment that has like four or five domain administrators It's and, and legacy domains. Let's not forget that. Mm -hmm. you, you see these types of mistakes constantly. Um, so I think doing an audit would probably be the best thing. Start there and see what problems exist, right? And try to at least establish some type of baseline because this isn't just for red teams, right? Oh, no. This is also for the blue teams. They should be auditing these things as well. Yeah, and, and it's important to know who has these permissions, who has these rights, you know, mm. and, and see where those now, accounts Now, that you can, used. that you can audit though. Oh, absolutely. Um, you can do a dump and you could see if it's like the administrator level accounts or if you do this and you're like, oh dear God, every user account in our environment has this. Yep, um, which, which would be a bad place. Uh, but James B says, just one more PowerShell said every system's admin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, are yeah. there a maximum number of creatable objects in Active Directory? There are, but it is a very large number now. I, I think that's like how many how many angels can dance on the head of a pin type. Yeah. Of <laughs> it, it it used to be I can't over a billion objects, and it's increased. It it is a huge number, uh, and it's really yeah. Two billion or so, and that's really limited by by SIDS more than anything. Um, yeah, but yes, that that has increased. Let's just go um, with it's a big number. Just leave it. It's at a that. really big number. Yes, yeah. vastly mind-bogglingly huge. It actually is. So. Yeah. So. All right. Any other questions, folks? Keep them coming. Serena, did you have anything you wanted to ask? Uh, no. But it was very good, informative presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just trying this to is, say I did okay. Yeah, I mean, luckily, <laughs> they kind of worked. Uh, well, if we're critiquing your copy and paste uh, skills. Skills get, are get horrible. A, a, yeah, I know. Get a five in this one. You gave me a five? I was, yeah. I was down at two. I was like, that was just No, 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 because you actually were able to do it eventually. <laughs> okay, eventually. Um, so, yeah, pro tip from somebody who's done it for the thing that you're copying and pasting should be in the thing you're pasting to. Uh, that would be the only recommendation I would say. So, Fair enough. So I've, I've done it. What I have found typically usually works for me. And I, yeah, I don't know why it didn't is. It's you because know, you're I doing this. It's because, because you have people watching. Yeah, that, that's that it. True. That's the only reason. That so. is true. Um, uh, James B made a comment just enough for Facebook to give us all AD creds. Um, you know, it's kind of a tongue in cheek thing. Um, yeah. But if you kind of look. I wonder how much of this is going to be changing as like Windows 11 and Microsoft is trying to push more and more things to the cloud and into Azure and into, you know, Office 365. And um, then it becomes a different set. Now it's, you start looking for similar overly proportioned things in Azure, right? Um, a lot, let's be honest, a lot of Active Directory was just literally picked up and dropped into Azure, like just troop. And then they added all kinds of other things on top of it. Yeah, so. in several ways. But you don't have all of the same. You don't have quite the same options, in in my opinion. Yeah. I could be right. So no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's looking for different things, right? Unfortunately, the, the default permissions are you know you have read access to this or whatever it might be, uh, especially when it comes to subscriptions. And so it's the same idea of trying to find who has that read permission or who, who has global reader or global admin, um, right? Mm -hmm. Those type of situations and see where you can pick that up and pivot from there. Uh, but I do see things shifting. Um, 
away from on-prem, definitely everybody is kind of seeing that on the wall, right? Let's start moving everything to Azure. Um, that's where most of the focus is, but I don't see on-prem going away. And yeah. that kind of brought in one of the questions of, do you see commercial products change some of these permissions? Absolutely, right? Microsoft some, some themselves have done it. Uh, as I said, if you yeah. have, if you're using the AD sync tool, that allows you to sync your on-prem environment to Azure AD, you have at least one account that has this permission, this replicate directory changes. It actually has replicate directory changes all. Um, that's the MSOL account. Uh, FIM did it, uh, Forefront Identity Manager or Microsoft Identity Manager now, it's, which is a way of syncing information between multiple different directories out there. SharePoint used to do it, I, um, I mean, Loads Active of directory tool. and application mode used to do it as well. Adam. Yep. Yep. Adam would do it if you needed to pull information across. Yes. So yep. you can see this in numerous tools needing this permission, which is why it's important to have, right? It, an account having this permission is not necessarily a problem. It's not a, oh, this is a horrible thing. We need to break <laughs> everything and stop um, unless it's an account that you didn't put there, right? So yes, it could be a yeah. problem, but by default, it's not. It's knowing where they're being used. So NC Cyber Threat Hunter said, I'm guessing it's not possible to configure AD for non-admins to not be able to read these permissions because it would break. Now, I think that that's a yes, no, maybe so. I think, yes, it has. you have to have certain things that are readable. What we're talking about is what are the levels that allow you to read yep. things that become sensitive? And that's really hard to shut off at that granular level. Yep. And, and also it goes to the, the same issue you're going to have with, with any typical file system. I'm an ad, I'm an administrator. You, we can say, okay, we're going to block your ability to read this. We've changed the permission so that domain admins are denied access to read. However, I'm an administrator. So I will take control of that object, right? I will become the owner of that object and I will change the permission so that now I can read it. So yeah, making an administrator not be able to do something is, it, it just makes it more difficult for them, right? So it, it, it's more of a malicious action at that point, but you can't prevent them from doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, da, 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 da. So then let's see, did I see that Azure is going to start enabling MFI by, MFA by default in September, 2022? Mm -hmm. Right after they disable macros universally. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, funny, that would be nice. Uh, it is going to be, yes, that, that is what they stated they're going to do. So they're going to make it that MFA is a requirement for everybody. It's not just a nice to have, let's, let's think about it. So, but the, that's more of you're going to set MFA. It's it's actually you have to have MFA set and you have to have um, the self-service password reset set. You have to have that enabled and set. However, your administrator can always go in and change your conditional access policies so that you don't need to use your MFA, even though you have it set. Right. So it's yes, you will have that as a requirement to have it set, but it doesn't mean you're going to actually have to use it all the time. Although I'd highly recommend that you should use it all the time. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, that's great. Eric, thank you so much uh, for joining. Um, we've been popping in things. We've got a class that'll help with these types of things at Anti-Siphon Red Team Fundamentals for Active Directory. Um, and then also, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to mention this at the beginning and I should have. Uh, Secure Ideas is a sister company. Kevin Johnson and I started our respective companies at roughly the same time. Um, and they're just an awesome, awesome organization. And they have a CISSP class that's coming up as well. So, if, you know, they do, they do a great job in everything that they do. So please check out their training um, at Anti-Siphon. So with that, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much, everybody.